always on. KMTV Action 3 News Weekend starts now. Remembering a young life taken too soon as those who knew Sarah Root and those who didn't. Remember the woman killed in a crash one day after she graduated from Bellevue University. Tonight, loved ones, friends and strangers joined forces to honor Sarah. Good evening, I'm Kelly Bartnett. Kevin Bouton is off tonight. That remembrance is also aimed at helping her family and sending a message inspired by the man accused of hitting her. Reporter Miranda Christian joins us now with more Miranda. Hundreds of people showed up to Sarah's fundraiser this evening, all showing support for Sarah's family. Today is all about Sarah. This line shows how much Sarah Root meant to her friends and family. They packed the mile away hall in Council Bluffs. It would have been better if we were doing this for a wedding or even her graduation or her 22nd birthday. Sarah's mother, Michelle, joined the entire Root family there too, where dozens of businesses pitched in with silent auction items at the spaghetti dinner. It's overwhelming, heartwarming, that there's so many great people out there that care about this. The message of support is one part of Sarah's story. Police say she died at the hands of a drunk driver, 19-year-old Eswin Mejia, on January 31st. Mejia skipped bail. He hasn't been seen since. Sarah impacted every single person in this community, and so it's great to see the support that is coming to her from that all. It's finally a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. um, this whole thing has been a nightmare. It, it still is, but um, having this and seeing the support for Sarah, people just pouring in minute by minute, and, and like she said, the people calling us to give donations in the band, it's just... It's overwhelming because you never know how much somebody is loved and now you see it. As friends console the Root family, they're focused on two things, finding the man responsible for her death and changing laws so other families don't suffer. Day by day. When he's caught, that'll help me. And when that judge is out of office, that'll help me. So It's never going to bring Sarah back, but at least we can feel we did something in her honor and got justice for her. The family says some of the money raised tonight will go towards the Crime Stoppers reward for the arrest for Eswin Mejia. Reporting live, I'm Miranda Christian, came to be Action 3 News. Thank you, Miranda. A warrant is still out for Eswin Mejia's arrest. Family and friends want someone held accountable for the disappearance of the young illegal immigrant who was not placed on an immigration hold and given a low bond, even though he'd missed court on other traffic offenses. And tonight, at the benefit, this sign rallying people to unseat Douglas County Judge Jeff Marcuso, who, sent Mejia's bond, who set his bond at $50,000. His brother paid just $5,000 to get Mejia out of jail. Friends and family will remember a Western Iowa mother tomorrow and Monday. They're holding a visitation for Jordan Muxfelt in Logan tomorrow night. The 27-year-old died after the ATV she rode rolled near her home last Monday. She was pregnant with twins who also did not survive. Her minister calls her a woman dedicated to her faith and family. Muxfelt's funeral and burial are set for Monday. One look outside today reminds us it is still winter. Flurries fell across much of the metro off and on all day today. Everything from thick and heavy snow to something resembling sleet. And temperatures returned to the 40s too, making those record highs from the past few weeks seem kind of like they were in the tropics. But have no fear, Sunday is the first day of spring. Now, your weather alert first forecast. And we're looking at Threat Tracker back in the green right now. A lot of the snow showers have pretty much come to an end. Uh, they have uh, a few flurries coming out of uh, Iowa, but for the most part, we're done with the snow for a while after what turned out to be kind of a weird, crazy day across the metro. Threat Tracker will be in the yellow Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday as spring comes knocking. It's just around the corner and it looks like our weather is going to be turning a little more spring like. I'll tell you how warm it's going to be next week in just a few minutes. Thanks, John. A morning house fire leaves a family homeless. Firefighters say the fire broke out near 90th and O around 9 o'clock. One man was home at the time of the blaze. He tells KMTV he woke up to his bedroom filled with smoke and flames and as he walked out of the house, firefighters walked in. A passerby had noticed heavy smoke and flames coming from the back of the house and called 911. Firefighters were on scene for more than four hours. 
there's a lot of charring and we are working to remove the debris and the charring so that we don't um, see a smoldering hotspot or see a rekindle happen in the coming hours. Battalion Chief Kathy Bossman says firefighters face safety concerns while fighting that fire because power lines were down in the backyard. Firefighters also rescued two dogs. The cause remains under investigation. And a traffic stop in southwest Iowa tonight leads to two people arrested and two kids being put in protective custody. Fremont County stopped an SUV for a registration violation on, on I-29 about 15 miles north of the Missouri state line around 5 o'clock. Deputies say a search turned up more than 67 grams of meth, with most of it hidden in a bag with children's toys and clothing. They booked Jessica Leach and Jerry Easley on drug and child endangerment charges. Bullets fired hit a house and led to a chase in North Omaha today. Police captured a suspect near 42nd and Curtis. They were called to investigate shots fired in the area around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Police say no one was hurt. And police are searching for the man who robbed a gas station convenience store at gunpoint tonight. Investigators were called to the Valero near 30th and Lake just before 6 o'clock. Witnesses say the man covered his face with his jacket as he showed a gun and asked for money. Police say he ran east after getting away with an unknown amount of cash. And around the world tonight, the White House confirms two Americans were among five people killed in a terrorist attack in Turkey. This morning's attack shut down a busy district in Istanbul. Authorities say the attacker is among the five people found dead. At least 36 others were injured. It's the country's sixth suicide bombing in the past year. The U.S. says it stands by Turkey. And on to campaign 2016 coverage now. Tempers flare at a Donald Trump rally in Tucson, Arizona, as protesters and supporters begin throwing punches and shoving each other. It came hours after another group of demonstrators blocked the only major road leading to the rally site before being removed by sheriff's deputies. On the Democratic side, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders joined deputies and local leaders as he stopped at the Arizona-Mexico border. Sanders spoke with those entering, coming into the U.S. at the port of entry and promised to expand executive orders protecting undocumented immigrants. Arizona's primary is Tuesday, with Utah and Idaho holding Democratic caucuses on that same day. Celebrating the area's rich cultural heritage is the goal of one event in South Omaha today. People got a glimpse at Africa, Asia, and Latin America, all at Omaha High School. The school's Thrive Club put on the event, featuring displays on the history and the culture of the countries where students were born. Organi organizers say by showing off their heritage, students can show how well they've adjusted to Omaha. Students we talked to agree. So it's kind of awesome how they are like seeing and then experiencing all the new stuff that we have. It means everything to me it, because I get to experience the culture that we have here. I have made friends from Nepal, from Thailand, from Africa, and I think that's really nice because it has helped me a lot to expand my horizons. It's the cultural event's third year held along with a talent show and a college fair. Some college students use spring break as an excuse to party and others use it to relax, but a number of UNO students have something else in mind, service. Several spent the morning at the Open Door Mission sorting clothes, cleaning, and doing dishes. Those helping out say they give, get more than they give. Come to help us strangers and have fun with them because someone will help you in the future. We help today, someone will help us later. The seven days of service started 14 years ago when students gave up their spring break to repair homes for low-income families and it's grown from there. An Omaha native is now part of the cable news cycle as Bernie Sanders press secretary. Coming up, why Simone Sanders headlined awards for equality and who else shared that honor with her. And coming up in weather, we're hours away from the end of winter, and I'll tell you what the weather is going to be like, and it looks like it's going to be